Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking through how to draw a giraffe. I haven't drawn a, dra a giraffe before myself so this is a new one for me as well. So I've got this lovely photograph from Pixabay and I'll put the link in the description below to the reference photograph. So to begin with, to tackle this, we need to look at where to space him, her on the page. So don't set off drawing the face, uh, the eye and the ear and everything and then realise you've not left enough space on your page to fit this neck in. We want some of the neck to show so that we've got these patterns on that are really going to make it look like a giraffe. And I don't think we need to bother with these trees from behind. We can make our own um, background up later as well if you want to do some greenery and things because if you look here we've got some bars so it's obviously in a zoo and it might be nicer to put it in a more natural setting so we'll just concentrate on drawing the actual features and the face um, and the detail of the, the the animal itself and not worry too much about the background to begin with so we'll just get the basic shapes in to begin with and we'll start with the uh, the face itself and if we look we've got sort of a triangle between the um, neck and the face so we'll start and put that in and again that leaves us space for the neck then I'm hoping this is, I'm going to go over these lines a few times so that they'll show up more to you and some of these may be just guidelines that are going to get rubbed out later as well it's very long this face um, longer, so leave yourself plenty of space so the basic shape really, we're talking about a triangle aren't we, so if you think it's more or less a triangle flattens off at the top so get some real sort of blocky basic shapes in and then we'll come back and refine it so the ear fits into this square flat bit here and look at how far above the actual um, actually I've got it going too far up if you look at it it goes more off that way that I've got it going up that way look at how it's attached and then look at the shape of where it's attached there and again we can refine this a bit later so that, that's the, the hair on the inside of the ear as well and then behind the ear if you look here you'll see that's the top of the head so now we're starting to look at some finer detail and where things lie and these horns again if you look across from them they go slightly taller than the um, ear but not much and the other one peeping from behind and then the head is coming out from between those two horns so make sure you've got that right that you're coming out from between them and not in front of one or the other so the back one just take that line out and then that's more obvious I'll go over this in a pen with a pen in a moment to once I've put the detail in so look at where things compare to each other at the moment we've perhaps got this ear a little bit big Now think about where the bones are, so can you see we've got a cheek there and actually the patterns are helping us to see where the, the line of the cheek and the mouth and things are as well. So the eye starts much lower than the ear and it's below those little horn things. And it's important that you get the eye socket in as well as the eye. So if you look there you can see the shape made by that uh, bone of the eye socket and this is the eye socket of the other side actually can you see here if you look carefully at the photograph this bump here is the, the eye socket from the other side of the giraffe so not putting its markings in at the moment I'm just looking at the shapes and I've not actually got his neck coming up far enough his neck should be a bit further than that and then the mane so one line of the neck and another line of the mane and here under the chin it goes out a little bit and then let's get a bit more shape in than that first initial line the first line we put in was very straight so all the time just correct your lines with your pencil keep going over keep it very sketchy because afterwards we can rub out the lines that are wrong and keep the lines that we like so with his nose that's very round on the end so don't have it pointy it's very round and very crinkly here if you look as well very soft on the top of his nose where he's got sort of smooth hair and he's all crinkled up here, there's a few lines and then a nostril so look at the size of the nostril compared to the size of the eye and you know compare things all the time to see what size they should be I think we're not too bad at that, it's uh, 
perhaps a little bit narrow here if you look there from the eye down actually not too bad it's similar from there to there as it is from there to there so that's probably about right so just before you go and put your pen on or you do your, your watercolor or whatever you're fancying doing just check those measurements see which ones are similar so that measurement there is similar to that there and things like that just keep comparing it perhaps I've not gone as steep enough here can you see um, how steep that eye socket is where it comes out from there I think it comes out a little bit lower then round sort that out with a pen okay so I'm now going to go and get a pen and then we'll carry on and do a little bit more detail okay so now I've got a pen we can come and start putting some more detail in so if some of those pencil lines are wrong when you start doing your pen just make sure that you you alter them at this stage don't be fastened to that pencil drawing that you've done because the more we look at a subject or a photograph the more we see and you might think oh I've just got that line slightly wrong so correct it with your pen so that's a good thing you're sort of drawing it twice in a way so you're thinking about things twice and that way you get quite a, a much more accurate drawing as well so I'll start up here and looking at it is perhaps a little bit lower down that line than I've got it so again I'll uh, pop that there and can you see all these little spiky bits of hair that are going off the back so now you can start and put some extra details in that you haven't got I've got quite a thick pen um, it's a 1.5 so thicker than I normally work with but I want it to be quite a, a strong picture So if we look here, again, this is what I came back to before about how the ear is attached. So get one or two of these sort of crinkly lines of where it's attached. And then if you look, you've got where it curls over here and round. You're seeing part of the back of the ear. So we're seeing the inside more there and of course when we come to put some watercolour on we can make that darker inside the ear. So keeping it quite linear and quite straightforward the actual drawing and then we'll come and put um, a bit more detail in with the paint as well. So of course once you've got done it with pen you're not going to be able to correct it so you need to be quite sure of where you're going with those lines. But of course, as I've said before with other subjects, it doesn't matter if it's this particular giraffe, as long as it looks like a giraffe. You know, if, if you're not exactly like the photograph, don't worry. The person that uh, is looking at your painting later on isn't necessarily going to have a picture like the picture in front of them. So um, they're just going to see a giraffe. I wasn't sure then whether to do the pupil in the pen or just to leave it. I think that looks quite nice, but make sure you do leave some highlights there. Again, we've got those crinkles. So you'll see I'm not actually putting the uh, markings in yet. I think I will do those with, water, with the paint. In fact, what we could do is use a resist, a wax resist for the white parts. So perhaps we'll do that. And then the gingery, I think you'd call it ginger, wouldn't you? The gingery parts will do with paint. So if you look here you can see this part there's sort of another nostril behind so that's something I hadn't noticed before. And some of these lines here are giving us that crinkled nose look and it's very crinkly his nostril isn't it? It looks like he's very soft. Um, I've never touched a giraffe but it looks like he'd be very soft to touch. And I'll put that quite dark inside his nostril. I mean it's, I know on the photograph it's not necessarily as dark as that but we'll make it quite a little bit cartoony in a way I suppose we're making it aren't we. And 
and then we've got lots of uh, hairs coming off here, little bits of whiskers, some whiskers here. I think that's enough. We won't overdo it with the pen, just get the shapes right. So you can see there he's sort of got a double chin, he's got one cheek going round there, which more or less comes up to the ear, and then another little bit there, and then this part goes down to his neck. So look whereabouts on the ear, the neck comes out, about there, and then we'll do the mane. I won't make it too solid because again we want to put some colour on there. It's a very neat mane, I mean it almost looks as if it's been trimmed but I very much doubt that they trim um, a giraffe's mane. Maybe they do, I don't know, but you know, if you had a horse's mane it wouldn't be as tidy as that would it naturally. Okay, so actually I think that's enough of the pen. So what I'll do now is I'll just give it a few seconds to dry and then I'll rub out those pencil lines. Okay, so I've erased those pencil lines and we've just got the ink there now and I'm going to put a resist on. So this is a wax um, oil pastel and it's a Jackson one and I'm, it's not actually a white one, it's a pale orange but it's very, very pale. But I don't think really that that's white. It's more of a creamy colour. So I'm going to use this as a resist. If you've not got a coloured um, wax, wax crayon to use, then you could just use a white one. Okay, so, and don't worry too much about them being exactly where they are on the giraffe. Um, I'm sure it's a bit like a fingerprint. I'm sure that they're all, all a little bit different. I mean, the main thing's going to be to get the shape right around the eye and around here. You know, we need those lines around there to make the shape of the face. But these lines here, if they're not exactly like this, it's not the end of the world. So I'll just set off and, and you know, the thing about the wax is though, don't forget, once it's on, it's on. So it's very difficult to, you know, you can't go over it once it's on. And these lines want to be quite thick because they are quite, um, quite thick, these shapes, the lines of these shapes here. So I'll try and copy them as much as I can. Might not all just exactly fit on. There's one down here. They sort of make little squares really, don't they, the shapes? Just make them, make them nice and thick, like I say. I'm not sure how much that's going to show up to the camera, so I'll just carry on and, like I say, get the shape of the face in so that one comes up it's lighter it's much lighter around the ear so plenty of light around there it keeps some of those lines be careful that you don't cover the whole thing these um hairs are quite light and it's light on the inside of his ear there but further in it's much darker so we'll just put a little bit on there and into here And then we must get it light above his eye there. I'm saying he, it might be a she, I don't know. Anything about giraffes. And the patterns, I mean, there's just a bit of light there, but I think that's just actually the sun coming on the front of his head, isn't it, there? So just put a little bit of light. The patterns up here are much, much smaller. So try and use the edge or, one, you know, try and make a, an edge on your crayon and use an edge if you can and get some smaller as long as the sort of squarish shapes or diamondy shapes it's gonna look not too bad and they sort of fizzle out there and then turn into ginger don't they as they go up that little sort of horn um, so we're, we're getting more of an impression of these shapes than actually following them I mean, I'm doing it quite quickly because obviously I'm doing the video and I don't want to spend all day um, boring you as you watch me, but you'll have much more time than me to get these shapes exactly as they are if you really wanted to. And it's quite a bit lighter underneath the mouth there. And then they come bigger again, so they're small around the eye and the ear, and then further down here the shapes are much more open and big. And actually they're fading out a little bit here, can you see? So what I'm doing now is not putting as much pressure on this crayon, I'm just doing some very light lines here a little bit of light there 
and then he's got some light on the end of his nose. Again this is sunshine on his face, not necessarily pattern. And that's probably enough. So I'm going to leave that at that and then I'll go and get my watercolours. Okay, so I've decided to go quite bright and use um, the cadmium colours. If you wanted him to be more natural, you could use more of the earth colours. So f I'm using um, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow mixed with cadmium orange, and then for the darker colour, this is burnt sienna mixed with ultramarine, and that's a slightly thicker version of that one. Now, if you wanted him to look like he does on the photograph, very natural colours, go for a yellow ochre underneath, or a raw sienna and then go for a burnt sienna on the top um, so I just wanted him to be nice and bright so I've used these much brighter colours so to begin with I'm going to wet the whole giraffe including his mane just with clear water and of course the paint is not going to stick to this wax resist so just make sure he's all covered but don't go into the background be careful that you've got a nice pointed brush that you can keep the water within those ink lines. So although this is quite a big brush, it comes to a nice point so you can be accurate with it. Don't go over his eye actually, keep his eye dry for now. We don't want any yellow or orange in his eye. So this is just the watercolour pad that I was using the other day, so it's a £140 um, watercolour pad. So the first mixture is quite a thin mixture of cadmium yellow and I'm just going to put that everywhere. Over his mane. not too much yellow in his ear actually just a little touch but again like I said I'm using quite unrealistic colours I make him brighter than uh, than he was and having him wet to begin with just means that that's all going to all these colours are going to flow into each other and we're going to get a nice wet in wet feel And then we're going to go over with some of the orange and I'm going to leave some bits of yellow. So if you look at him now, look at where he's lighter. So if you look on his mane, his mane's darker at one side and lighter at the other. So the areas that are lightest leave more yellow there. I've probably got this a touch too wet actually. So just drop the colours into each other and let them mix on the paper. It's very wet here but it doesn't matter. So the good thing about the wax resist is we now don't really have to worry about painting at all. We're just dropping colours on, having a bit of fun dropping them into the water. But paint in the direction that the, you know, where is, he is going, uh, paint along his face. And then the darker colour. Look where he's darker, where there's a bit more shadow and just put the shadow in and we can keep doing this and we can keep coming back and putting extra in. A bit darker around here and obviously he's very dark on the inside of his ear there. 
And I think what we'll do in a moment when I've just popped these darts in, there's actually a shadow goes all the way down here. I think, you know, where his neck sort of, it's probably this, he's probably got two muscles in his, I mean, I don't know anything about uh, the anatomy of a giraffe, but I'm assuming that this front part, there's a, there's another muscle there, you can, because you can see this shadow going down. Again, a little bit darker on the edge of his mane. So you can see it's very, very wet. So what I'm going to do now is just leave it for the edge to go off that um, and then come back to him in a minute when he's starting to dry a little bit. Okay, so you'll see it's still pretty wet, but I just wanted it to, you know, go slightly um, less wet than it was, if that's a, a good term. You don't want it to dry out completely. We're still working wet in wet. It was just that it was, you know, swimming about. And the trouble is when you've got wax there, um, as the water moves off that, it's going to pool in other areas. So you are going to get it quite wet. So whilst that was drying a touch, I made another mixture up of the orange, much thicker than this one. So there's a lot less water in this and a lot more pigment. And I'm going to sort of get a bit more shape in some of these areas now with a smaller brush. So you'll see I've got a smaller brush. And just flick a bit with this. I know I said these were all quite uh, uniform, but it's just going to make it look a bit more interesting if we get a bit more line going on up here. There's not much orange at all in his ear, is there? It's more of that, just that creamy colour. So let's just look where it's most orange. Very orange on these parts here. And this is quite heavily coloured down here, going around his eye. And again, we're going to reinforce some of those shapes. So because the sort of square shapes, you can do it with the side of your brush. Just make a little square. And because it's not dry, those colours are still going to mix together. So under here you'll see it's quite dark, isn't it? There's quite a bit of colour under there, on this side of his nose. And don't forget with your watercolours that they're going to dry lighter. So we do need plenty of colour on. So it's lovely how the colours are mixing together. And like I said before, it looks like he's quite soft. Um, so I think having those colours mixing together is helping with that. That's all running to that side, can you see, because the paper's starting to, because it's only a cheap pad and not um, an expensive paper. Although I've got it taped at the end, it's starting to flow that way. So we can soon correct that, just pull it off, pull it back a bit and tidy up that edge. So now let's look at where it's really dark um, and I've got this thicker mixture of the dark colour. Again you'll have more time than me to, to do this and you know you could perhaps tape your paper all the way around and then you're not having that problem of it going over the edge there. So one of the darkest areas really is in the middle of his ear. And on the top of these, whatever they're called. A few of these little hairs here are a bit darker. And there's a bit of shadow going on around about here, shaping that ear and the top of his head. So again, follow some of the lines down to make more of a shape. Can you see how we've got a darker place there? Again, some of these lines, these wrinkles that are coming up here, a bit of that shadow there, and underneath his nostril. I'm just going to come with a bit more colour around here. 
and I'm actually going to get some of this dark and go into his eye now with that. Not leave too much of the white because you can't actually see it. Okay, so at this point you could actually leave it and just have it like that as a nice wetting wet or the other alternative which I think we'll do is let it dry completely and then come back on top of it with some extra line and detail. Okay, so I'll come back to you when that's completely dry. Okay, so it's more or less dry and as you can see the colours have faded a little bit. It's still a little bit wet in places uh, in the middle of his ear and down here a little bit. But I'm going to just now finish him off by just tidying him up a little bit in places. So with this dark, I'll just make a little bit more of it actually. So the dark colour I've got is ultramarine. This is a handy dark colour to have actually, ultramarine and burnt sienna. Quite a nice warm dark colour that, you know, rather than having black. So in just one or two places, we'll just define some of the shapes. Because these are very dark up here and sort of round. So make that a bit round and we'll just come in and tidy up his eye a little bit. A few extra eyelashes. Some extra shadow under here, of course that's bound to be in the shadow because the top of his nose is casting a shadow underneath. He's got quite a bit of shade here behind his cheek and that's just going to, if you put that line in there, that's just going to push his cheek forward as well, show that up a little bit more. But we don't want to overdo it, like I said this is still a touch wet so I'll just pop some extra in there because that's going to go lighter as it dries and it's nice and dark in there. Plenty of dark pigment into his ear. Though I don't want to overdo it with the detail. The one thing that I don't like about him, I should have put a wax resist down this part of his mane because you can see how much lighter it is nearer to his neck than it is here. And actually he's got the light catching on here as well. So I should have put some wax resist in his mane and I didn't. But don't worry, you can come back and put some over the top to get some light back. So I'm just going to add that all the way up where it's lighter and a couple of dashes on the end here as well where it's catching the sun. Not overly happy with his mane, like I say you, you'll have more time to get it just how you want it. But the thing about mixed media is and using wax with your watercolour and things you can correct things. I mean here I think it perhaps needs to be a bit lighter around here as well. So you can put the wax back over the top as well if you feel you've gone too dark in places. Even there you can let the, um, you know, the colours still come through. You can sort of put a nice little layer over the top and still have that orange shining through where you want it a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm not going to do a background but you can see how, I'm just looking there, that's still a bit wet. Oh, I'll leave that. I'm going to make a mess if I'm not careful. I was just going to go behind him with, with that where it was um, gone over the line there, but never mind, we'll leave that. So if you wanted to do a background, you could do something quite natural, um, you know, some greens and things to make him look like he was outside rather than he's in a zoo. Okay, or a nice sunset would be nice, wouldn't it? As if he was, you know, in a desert setting, some nice pinks and things for a sunset. So I might carry on and do that, I don't know, um, but we'll see. So I hope that's given you some ideas for having a go at doing some animals that you perhaps haven't tried before. Like I say, I've never tried a giraffe before and uh, I've quite enjoyed it because, like I said, they've got a lovely kind eye, haven't they? They're a nice animal to have a go at. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.